What have water parks got to do with Alzheimer's disease? Well, in this talk, I'm going to tell you. My name's Yolanda Rohini, and I'm a neuroimaging scientist. This means that I develop imaging techniques to help to solve some of the toughest problems about how the brain works. I've always been fascinated by techniques that are able to tell us something that we can't figure out just using our eyes. Airport scanners, x-rays, infrared temperature probes, and using techniques that allow us to see inside the body, inside the brain, really grab my attention. A good way to do this is by using an MRI scanner. You've probably heard of an MRI because many people have MRI scans these days. MRI technology has really revolutionised healthcare. Some years ago, I applied to work in a research group developing MRI techniques. In the interview, I got one of those big te technical questions that you anticipate and you dread. They asked me, do you know how an MRI machine works? Now, at that point, what I did know was MRI is magnetic resonance imaging. Imaging making a visual representation of something just like a selfie. Magnetic means using magnets, strong magnets and magnetic fields. And resonance causing things to move together at the same rate. A bit like tuning into a radio station. But I realised at that moment that I needed to know more, and now I do know more. So how does an MRI machine work? It uses strong magnets and a radio transmitter. We send the pulse of radio energy into the body, often at the same frequency that excites water molecules. Because the water is excited, it has extra energy that's released when you turn off the radio transmitter. You can detect that extra energy by using the radio receiver, which ultimately gives you an image of where the water is and what it's doing. Essentially, we're looking at water inside the body. And this is our first clue for what water parts have got to do with Alzheimer's disease. Now, the problem with Alzheimer's is that we detect it too late. The cognitive changes that we see, memory loss, confusion and so on, are happening maybe 20 years after the changes in the brain have begun. So it's crucial we try to detect the onset of Alzheimer's much earlier. And the way to do that might be using an MRI scanner to look at the way that water behaves in the brain. We know that our bodies are made up of a lot of water, approximately 70%. The most common MRI images that you may have seen before are in different shades of grey, showing the structure of the brain. But our brain is such a dynamic organ. Our brain is responding to us breathing, to our heart beating. It doesn't ever switch off. And if we want to understand it further, we have to know how the brain is behaving dynamically. And here's where my research comes in. I'm using MRI to measure water movement in the brain. Blood vessels supply the brain with all of the oxygen and the molecules that it needs to be able to function correctly. There's water in the blood vessels and there's water in the brain tissue. And the water is moving between the blood vessels and the brain tissue all of the time, helping to transport the molecules that the brain needs. This all might sound a little bit abstract, but this is where the water part comes in. Imagine a water park with flumes and pools. Imagine the water moving through a flume into a pool and then out into another flume. And imagine people sliding down the flumes into the pools. The flumes are like the blood vessels in the brain and the pool is like the brain tissue. Well, kind of. And the people are like the important molecules that the brain needs. Well, also kind of. Now imagine that a flume gets damaged. Water would pour into the pool and all over the water park and people would be everywhere that they shouldn't be, probably getting injured. In the brain, if we see the water moving faster between the blood vessels and the tissue, that could mean that the blood vessel is damaged, which would be bad news. Now back in the water park, now imagine that the water has stopped flowing down the flume. People would get stuck in all sorts of places, in the flume, in the pools, along the lazy river. Now, in the brain, if we see the movement of water slowing down, that might mean that the molecules are getting stuck or building up in places they shouldn't. Well, in Alzheimer's disease, two molecules build up in the brain, amyloid beta and tau. 
Some people think that these molecules aren't cleared correctly from the brain. If the water slows down, the molecules might build up in the brain, which could be an indicator of the onset of Alzheimer's disease. So measuring water movement in the brain could work in two ways. Too fast and we might be detecting damage. Too slow might indicate that molecules are building up in the brain and not being cleared. Either way might indicate the early onset of Alzheimer's disease. So I'm currently de developing a technique to measure the water movement from the blood vessels to the brain tissue using an MRI scanner. But there's a big, big question here. If we can detect Alzheimer's earlier, then what? We still can't cure it, not yet. Over 200 drugs have already failed, but this might be because we're treating it too late. If we can detect it earlier, we might be able to develop drugs that are more successful or other interventions that might slow down or ultimately stop the disease. And wouldn't that be great?